Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Today I'm comparing the three Lego Marvel modular buildings. On the right we have the Daily Bugle, which was the very first one in 2021. In the middle we have the Sanctum Sanctorum, which released in 2022. And on the left we have the brand new Avengers Tower, which is the biggest Lego Marvel set ever made, and as you can see, the biggest of these three New York City buildings. I really love this line. I mean, I like modular buildings in general, and so to get a Marvel one every year now for the last three years has been a real treat. Like, the Daily Bugle shocked all of us, and even though I didn't love the Sanctum Sanctorum, I think that the line is continuing really strong with Avengers Tower which you can watch my review of right now. Before we get into comparing these though, I do want to remind everyone that I am an employee of the LEGO group. However, all opinions expressed in these videos are my own and do not necessarily reflect the views of the LEGO group. And LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO group of companies, which does not sponsor, authorize, or endorse this site. Each of these sets are built on a dark bluish gray base plate. They are pretty similar because they each come with a bunch of minifigures, some exclusives, a lot of like little pieces to pose up and create these like really nice displays with your superheroes without having to bring in many of your own parts. I was especially impressed with that on Avengers Tower and of course the Daily Bugle, which as you can see are both just crawling with minifigures because both of them are, I think, some of the LEGO sets to have the highest minifigure counts, because the Daily Bugle has 25 minifigures and Avengers Tower has 30. And I do have a lot on the inside of Avengers Tower, because despite the high minifigure count, I feel like Avengers Tower does not look as busy as the Bugle does. So I'm definitely going to have to change that as I add in more minifigures to put this in my city display. I think these three sets look fantastic together, though. This is kind of the order that I like to display them in because the Daily Bugle does overhang its base plate a little bit with the sign, and I think Avengers Tower overhangs its base plate as well thanks to the balcony. So you really can't have those buildings next to each other unless Avengers Tower is facing in the opposite direction, but it's not supposed to. Like, this is the front of Avengers Tower because that's where the entrance is, and the back of the building just has an alleyway. So you don't want to be putting an alleyway next to a street, so yeah, they can't be displayed next to each other in this configuration, which is a shame, but I don't blame the designer at all because you need to have the balcony and it's taller than like every other Lego Marvel or Lego modular building in general other than the Daily Bugle. So it's fine to have it overhanging the base plate a bit. But now that I've placed these two side by side, I actually am really impressed with how the tower looks next to the Bugle. I thought that they were going to look too similar in height because you can see that Avengers Tower isn't that much taller, although a lot of the Bugle's height is due to that big antenna at the top. Or, I mean, not a lot of the Bugle's height. It's still a skyscraper, but, you know, like, the finishing touches. Like, that antenna has a foot of height. That is not, like, actual building. And Avengers Tower is, like, all actual building for the most part with just two really tiny antennas on top. So I do love how like Avengers Tower, the balcony is what lines up with the Daily Bugle sign because the balcony is, is not where Avengers Tower like ends, you know, like that's just where the party is getting started. Literally, if you've seen the interior, you know that that's where the Avengers bar is. So I really like that, you know, that like the Avengers party, like with a with a rooftop view of all of the other buildings in the city. So I think that they look like really respectable together, but... I do think that like this is where you start to see that Avengers Tower, I'm not asking for it to be taller, but I mean, I do wish it was taller. I kind of want to build my own base for it or something, because why is a newspaper building like almost the same height as the Avengers headquarters? I really, really love both of the sets, but I do just want Avengers Tower to tower over everything else. So I think I want to build like, some kind of base to expand its height, like, a little bit. I want it to be, like, a foot taller than the Bugle, like, noticeably taller, you know? Like, I want the balcony to not be, like, lined up with the sign. I want the balcony to be, like, over the sign when you're looking at them next to each other. And the poor Sanctum, we keep forgetting it, but this is my least favorite of the three. It is the least accurate. Well, I mean, the Daily Bugle I don't think has ever looked like that in the comics, but the Sanctum is from the MCU, and it always bothered me that, like, a fifth of the building was shaved off to make it a corner unit, because it could have been a corner unit while still being complete. So, yeah, I really don't like that that, like, 
angled part of the building on the other side was taken out because I think it makes it look unfinished. And I do think the Sanctum gave you like the least value for money. It was it's two hundred and fifty dollars. The Bugle was three fifty when it came out. Avengers Tower is five hundred, and it did come with like the fewest number of minifigures with only nine. Three of which came from Avengers Infinity War, and I don't think needed to be in the set. So I think I have a review of the Sanctum on my channel if you want to watch that too. But yeah, I just it's just not my favorite. It's still a beautiful display piece, but I definitely prefer the skyscrapers because we've never seen anything like these in Lego form until now. So the modular connections are on the sides of all three buildings, although I believe the holes on the Daily Bugle are misaligned a little bit because that's why Avengers Tower has like a 1x4 brick instead of a 1x2 brick, I think to make up for the holes on the Daily Bugle being too close together or something like that. I'm not exactly sure to be honest, because I don't actually connect my buildings to each other in the city. I just place them next to each other, because if they were connected, then I'd never be able to like move them around individually or just pick them straight up out of the display when I need to. But actually, Avengers Tower is not a true modular building because it can't separate the floors. Ugh, Wong keeps breaking off, but Wong shouldn't be in Avengers Tower anyway. I keep breaking off his portal at the back of the tower, sorry. But yeah, you can't separate the floors of Avengers Tower. Instead, what you need to do is just take off this entire front section of glass, and that's how you get access to the interior. For the Sanctum Sanctorum, it is a true modular building, so you just separate it by the floors. But I'm actually going to leave, or I, no, I'm not going to leave any of the floors on. Let me just put this. And that's how you get access to the interior. So you can see a little bit of the Sanctum library there. You can have that monster poking out the side of the building. But I think that then um, it, it kind of like, again, goes beyond the base plate and then starts crashing into other modular buildings. But yeah. I did really like the interior of the Sanctum because I thought that it was brought to life really faithfully, especially like the entrance here, which is straight out of the movies. And the library, as you can see, it's like hollow down the center. So you do actually have like a really nice entryway for minifigures when they go into the Sanctum. And even like the topmost floor of the Sanctum was really cool with Strange's little like museum of relics and everything so yeah i'm not gonna like take a look at every single interior room here but i will say that the sanctum interior was just fantastic and packed with every reference that you needed from the doctor strange movies the bugle on the other hand is a little bit odd because it is a modular building you can remove all of the floors but it also has this unique way to get inside by just pulling off the front floors so that you can like get access while this is in your city and you don't need to be taking all the floors off. So these walls can be like a little bit delicate as you can see. And I always loved this with Green Goblin like smashing through the window because you can repair this damage if you want. You get enough pieces to do that. Um, I'm not going to take that floor off on the top actually because I think Doc or Doc Ock or Spider-Man like people are connected to it. So it's going to get a little bit dicey, but I really love the Bugle's interior because you got a great lobby on the ground floor. You had fantastic minifigures, as you can see, with those three exclusives being my favorites. You had, like, newspaper offices, um, or I guess just, like, news offices. I don't know. You had Peter Parker's office. Oh, Gwen Stacy should not be lying on the floor like that. She looks like she just fell from a great height. But you have an elevator design, which is actually the exact same as the one in Avengers Tower. And then on the very top floor, here I can take this off if I hold it for you guys. Um, but yeah, on the very top floor, you have, or actually, I was going to say, can Spider Man hold it? No, he can't. You have J. Jonah Jameson's office and his like secretary. So I really love the interior on the bugle, although you can see it is like pretty small. Like the building itself, it does not have the floor space that Avengers Tower or the Sanctum has. I've taken a look at the Avengers Tower interior like a bunch of times on video by now in my Avengers Tower comparison in my review. So here we go. Lobby, just like the Bugle. I mean, it doesn't look like the Bugle, but I like having a lobby. I think that that's great. Little lab area with a sky bridge. 
you have Tony Stark's like Iron Man suit workshop, and then you have a room from the helicarrier where Loki was imprisoned. Then as we get higher into the tower, I need to pick up my camera so it's going to get a little bit shaky. We have the docking area for the Quinjet, which is fantastic. We have up here a little party area for the Avengers, and there goes Falcon, knocked over by the camera. But yeah, there's a little party area and bar, like I said. If you take off like this section of the roof by kind of pulling down on it, and I always break it when I try to do it one-handed. I think maybe I'm supposed to open that part first, but whatever. There's like where Hulk smashed Loki and some other references to the movies. And then all the way up at the top, you have a Loki scepter being scanned. The interiors to all three of these sets are amazing, but actually, I think Avengers Tower has my least favorite interior. It does have a lot of great references to the movies, but there's also just rooms that have nothing to do with the movies, you know, like having Loki's helicarrier pod in the tower. I like the room, it's like a nice reference to Avengers 1, which is what the tower is like half about, but it just, it doesn't need to be there. It's got nothing to do with the Avengers Tower. I honestly wish that there was like an Iron Legion like docking bay or something instead because they did actually fly into the A on the side of the tower to like kind of land in Age of Ultron so that would have been the perfect room to put them and that might make me like the tower interior a little bit better because everything you get is fantastic but with the Sanctum the accuracy to the movie is just unmatched with like the lobby and like the hollow second floor. It's just incredible and it feels very epic, so even though I don't love the outside of the Sanctum, I do really love the interior. And then even the Daily Bugle, it was just like so different when it came out in 2021 because it was the first LEGO skyscraper. You also got like a bunch of amazing printed newspaper pieces and like having the offices, having like the divides between like the offices on the second and like, or on the third and fourth floors. Having the elevator, like the same elevator design being in Avengers Tower, which I didn't really point out the best, but it's all on like the side there. I mean, maybe you can see it in Iron Man's workshop. It's like behind a dummy's arm in the corner. Like all of that was just new for the Daily Bugle, and it was like really, really exciting. So I do think that Avengers Tower like loses out a little bit because it's less accurate. I mean, I think the first two levels are perfect. And I think that, like, the party level and the Quinjet docking is perfect. But even, like, Loki's Scepter analysis, I love that area. But Loki's Scepter, or I mean, I guess Loki's Scepter was analyzed in the tower in Age of Ultron. But my mind just goes to it being analyzed for the first time on the Helicarrier, especially because you already have a room from the Helicarrier that's been transported to the tower. And I said this in my comparison and my review as well, but I would love a, just a place for the Avengers to chill out, not the party room, because that's like a celebration, that's like a bar. Like, I want a place where they can sit on the couch and watch TV, or, you know, like, go to sleep, or, like, take a shower or something, because they do live in the tower, and that's the kind of stuff that I really enjoyed putting in my custom version. And you can see, like, my interiors in my comparison video, or in my original like review of it from 2020, but my video quality was not as good back then. And lastly, another thing that I love about all three sets is they all have some consistent features around the back, because everyone has an alleyway around the back, and you all have that bright yellow dumpster. So that, I think, must be a designer's calling card. I don't know which designer has worked on all three buildings, unfortunately. Oh, but you can see there is that 1x4 brick in the Sanctum too to make up for the spacing being off on the bugle. So I wonder if every Marvel modular building from now on will need to have um, like a 1x4 brick instead of a 1x2 brick because someone like messed up the spacing on the bugle. That'd be kind of funny actually because it would be like a hallmark then of the Marvel modular series. But the bugle's like backside is my favorite. It's just got a lot going on. It's got an exit, like a little spot for Peter Parker to keep his bag. The side of the building actually has like a removable like destruction area. It's got like a manhole, it has a fire escape on the side, it's got windows at the back, so it is like honestly really pretty. There's even like a little balcony with another rear exit, and then a billboard and like a bird's nest, and then at the top you've got like the water tower. So there's just so much going on around the back of the Daily Bugle, I really really like that about it. The Sanctum, it does have the sling ring portal which is pretty cool, and I like the graffiti. I also love the advertisement for the Captain America Museum exhibit 
And you can see that advertisement posted on the like exit to the Avengers Tower as well. I do like the rear exits for like both the Avengers Tower and the Bugle. I think it's very realistic and it just makes me feel nice. But then going up the side of Avengers Tower, I mean, it's beautiful, of course, but it is very like plain just because like that's what the side of the tower looks like. You know, what are you going to do about it? But Avengers Tower also doesn't have a true back the way that the others do because I would argue that its back is like that rounded section, um, you know, like where it connects to the other buildings. So I don't know. It's just like Avengers Tower is more of a 360 degree display piece than the other two buildings, in my opinion. Even though, like, both of them can be displayed 360, and the Daily Bugle especially, it's a beautiful 360 build, you know, it doesn't have a side of the building that is identical to the front. So what a comparison this has been. I, I still can't believe we have three Marvel modular buildings to put next to each other like this. I do think Avengers Tower is my favorite, the Daily Bugle being my second favorite, and then, like I said, the Sanctum is my least favorite. But it's kind of funny that Avengers Tower is my favorite when it has my least favorite interior. But I just, I think that these sets are incredible. I can't wait to see like what building we hopefully get in 2024 because I just, I really, I really love this idea of being able to expand your modular city with like a district that's entirely superhero buildings. And so I, I really can't wait to see um, what the designers come up with. And I hope that there is one because, you know, I don't know if we'll see a Marvel modular building this year, but I really have my fingers crossed because I think it's becoming like a fantastic reoccurring theme. Honestly, just like the Ninjago City sets, how it started with one set and then two and then three and then four. Like, I love just watching these like little like sub themes of like regular lego set themes you know like i love watching these little direct to consumer sub themes start to pop up as the lego group like goes like hard in on the adult market and avengers tower is gorgeous i mean it is like the most beautiful screen accurate thing ever so if we're gonna get more buildings like that i say bring it on like i i'd love a marvel modular of the malibu mansion from iron man 3 even though that might be a little bit difficult so yeah, I just, I really love the displays that are created by these. I think the Sanctum one does suffer a little bit from not having as many minifigures, but I think once I put these in my city and like really add in a bunch of figures from other sets, it's going to be perfect. So let me know what you guys think about these sets in the comments below. Let me know which one is your favorite. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in more videos soon. Bye for now.